you didn't go into a major depression when Rage broke up. Like you didn't sit there. And, no, what we did, like, what we did when Rage broke up was we went over to Rick Rubin's house. Tim and Brad right. and I were like, we, what are we going to do? <laughs> and we listened to Bad Motor Finger by Soundgarden a lot. And we said, maybe we should talk to that dude. What and a voice. I don't know. What a voice. What a voice. That guy. What a voice. What but a I'll voice. tell you, it was an, it was a, it was an interesting, yeah. it was an interesting beginning because while, um, particularly like the song Slaves and Bulldozers. Yeah. Bad Morphe was was hugely influential on me, and I think that Soundgarden and Chris Cornell in particular helped right. redeem hard rock music. In that fans like me, who lo I love big riffs, I loved heavy riff rock music, but a lot of times I could not relate to the lyrics, which were either about the devil or groupies, neither of which right. were you know, you care significant about to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Soundgarden, along with a couple of other bands, like Chris was smart, and you could tell, and he was poetic, and he had like this kind of dark poetry that connected on a level that felt. Yeah, but he he also unapologetically embraced the big riff rock. So anyway, so Rick and I decide that we're going to go talk to Chris and see what he thinks. So Chris lives on the last loneliest castle in Ojai. Like you, it's an hour and a half outside of L.A. And, I, and Rick Rubin, like at the time I'm driving still being punk rock, I'm driving my 1985 Chevrolet Astro van. And now Rick doesn't leave the house unless he's in a Rolls Royce that's in another Rolls Royce. You know, so like he's, <laughs> no. you know, so, so he's yeah. serious about, he must be serious about this because he gets in my van to go. Yeah. So we drive up there. And the one thing about Chris's vocals and his lyrics, that there's a, there's a spookiness to them. And there's a sort of a, a darker side to them. And so I don't really know what he's going to be like. So we drive up there and, he, and we're, you know, it's in the darkening, it's dusk and we're kind of these tree-lined, Transylvanian like streets and we get up to the top and there's Chris's kind of spooky mansion there's some motorcycles out front and there's like the long sort of traipsing staircase and Rick and I pull up and and the doors you know the doors open straight up Adams family style like with nobody right. opening the doors and yeah. here comes Chris 6 2 of frame dark of countenance and he comes kind of slowly loping you know down the steps and Rick turns to me and goes let's get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> like our, so <laughs> like, like our wow. souls are in peril. Uh, fortunately, we did not. Fortunately, it was that we did not. Scary. It, it was we. It was weird. It was like it was weird. Yeah. It weird wasn't like, energy. hey guys, hey guys, come on in, you know, have, you know, have right. a have a cider. Um, but fortunately, we did we did persevere, <laughs> nah. and, uh, and and I was in a, you know a band, uh, you know those those three audio slave records, and while Chris was a friend. And while Chris was a bandmate, I never stopped being a fan of his and his ability to craft melody out of the ether. You could throw it, whether, whether it was a, you know, a, a few simple chords like the song Like a Stone or whether it was some complicated, you know, heavy riff, he would effortlessly create right. something that was either beautiful or terrifying. And is there an adjustment for you as a guitar player that all of a yes. sudden you're working with a new guy? Yes, it's absolutely. Like... I mean, not so much, not so much working with a new guy, but working with like a melodic singer. Um, right. You know, and his, his strengths were with melody, and it really challenged and pushed Tim and Brad and I. You know, like the music of Rage Against the Machine is James Brown based. It all comes around to the one. You know, it's like it's the same driving beat and the same driving rhythm that comes around because it's rapping and it's it's like the excellent punk rock vocals of Zach. With Chris, in order to allow him to shine, there had to be this kind of harmonic counterpoint. So it right. really, you know, like that song, Like a Stone was... You know, it's, it's a few simple chords, but allows Chris's beautiful voice to soar.